Understanding rotations is arguably the most difficult part of Fortnite competitive play, man. From having a far for zone to having to rotate with no materials in the final few zones, rotations have always been, you know, one of the hardest things to understand. In this video today, we're going to be discussing all things rotations from early game all the way into the final few zones by giving you guys helpful tips and reviewing a few pros to analyze how they rotate. But just before we get into the video, finally, you know, let's do the question of the day. Who's ready for that? Come on. Today's question is, what part of the game do you struggle in? You know, I know a lot of players that struggle in the mid game and, you know, they always seem to get pushed and then targeted. But you know what? We're all going to be working on this together to get better. So let us know in the comments what you think. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta. I'm not looking at messages, DMs from my old Insta, only on my new Insta at your motivation guy. That's right. Connect with me. I believe in you guys. Man, let's get it, man. But before we get into the fun, we need to ask you guys this. Do you guys want to get better at Fortnite? If the answer is yes, this is what I need you to do. All right, immediately visit ProGuys.com in the description where you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching from some of the best players, man. We also have a ton of content to help you guys improve from your favorite pros like Benji and Mongrel. My goodness. So if you want to see massive improvement, head on over to ProGuys.com as soon as you get the chance. Yo, it's about that time to sit back, relax, and grab my favorite candy, bro. You already know what that is. It's that bunch of crunch. Let's get this going. If there's one rule I can confidently say every pro player follows, regardless of their play style, it's rotating early before everyone else does. You know, rotating early puts you guys in a great spot as you're gonna be in front of everyone and able to shoot at people rotating in for easy picks, along with not having the storm fight to survive, which is always a plus. All right, so let's analyze this clip from Benji Fishy and let's just see how his early rotation benefits him. So we can see clearly, like Benji is in the end game and has a zone on the other side of the circle. Within four seconds of seeing it pop up, he starts running on the left side of the zone to get to safety, using wood builds to cover himself if he gets shot at. So Benji does get shot pretty hard, <laughs> but he manages to heal up quickly and he gets back into the game. Benji makes his rotation and immediately pushes up for high ground in the zone. Once he gets to height, he begins shooting an RPG at the player contesting him, and after a bit of exchange, he gets to keep his high ground. You know, if he had rotated late, this guy would be on ground level, getting sprayed by the entire lobby. Instead, he's on high ground in the best part of the zone, and he has the ability to shoot at other players to get picks. So we can see that he gets a pretty good zone, and he sets up his rotation early to keep his high ground. I'm telling you guys, these early rotations, bro, are absolutely crucial. While he waits, he starts spraying at a few players who are rotating late. This player is yet another example of why rotating late is a bad idea. This fit zone shows the true importance of being first to zone, as most of the late rotators got killed on their way, while Benji, the one who rotated early, got free shots off on them. You know, rotating early is absolutely crucial, so keep that in mind again when you're rotating in in any part of the game, whether it's the first or the ninth zone, whatever it is. Being the first player to zone can often result in you getting high ground, getting eliminations even, and, you know, even setting yourself up for more of this later in the game. Tunnel vision, whoo, my goodness. Tunnel vision refers to focusing too heavily on one player or one fight, resulting in loss of focus of your surroundings. This is something that I used to do all the time when I started playing and my God, I wanted to quit because I was just always so focused on one player and then I would just get ran over. You know, tunnel vision is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make. Whether they let an early game fight run too long or they even get overtaken by Storm in the end game due to focusing too heavily on one player. It's just so important, man, to focus on your surroundings and just make sure you always know what's going on around you. Gather as much information as possible and just use it to your advantage when you're rotating, all right? Instead of just focusing too heavily on one player or one small area. Sure, if you see a player in front of you, it's important to keep that in mind, I get it, but if all your attention just goes to that, you're not gonna be thinking about where the other players are or your materials or ammo or loot or any other thing like that could just be deadly. When you're playing in a competitive game, always focus on getting as much information as possible before each of your rotations. Scanning the entire zone for the best rotation path is a skill set most of the best pros have, and my goodness, I wish we could have it. But luckily for us, you know, it's not some sort of superpower or anything like that. By simply just shifting your focus onto everything around you instead of just one part or one small part, you're going to be setting yourself up nicely for your upcoming rotations, and you're going to have just much more information which you could refer to later on when you're actually making the rotation. 
So we can see right here in this clip that Mongo has low materials while rotating into the zone. He's too focused on getting kills and free shots that he isn't looking at his materials. This tunnel vision results in him dying to Storm, since he has no materials he could just use to continue tarping and no safe way to get down. If he had played it a bit slower and just a little more methodical, he likely would have been able to find more materials or just find another route to the zone. Regardless, while this was still a good game and he got some really nice kills, gotta admit that, he could have survived longer and he could have just paid more attention to his inventory. So understanding other players in your lobby, guys, is extremely important when planning your rotations. Understanding like what other players tend to think and do is a whole different level of game sense that top players got. First, it's important to know that anyone rotating late is going to get targeted, whether it's a lobby of good players or bad players. You know, if a player's in the safe zone, they're naturally going to target everyone they can find for easy elimination points. Whether it's a top pro like Benji Fishy or a Little Timmy 123 playing his first arena match, this is still going to be the case. You know, it's just ridiculous to expect players in the zone not to go for easy kills on players rotating late. This leads back to our first tip to always rotate early. So you could be one of those players targeting late rotators and not be the one of the late rotators. All right, second up, we've got the general situations of players. The best part of the game for most players is between zones four and six. In these zones, the majority of players have a good amount of health and shield, right? And also likely to have decent materials. Getting impact frags around this time is just much more difficult as most players are in a good situation. If you're looking for a kill around this time, keep your eyes somewhere around the edge of the zone. And that's just about the only place you're gonna find anyone in shambles. Later on, however, in the seventh zone and later, most players are either taking storm damage, low on health, or even have poor materials, or otherwise in a bad situation. This is a great time to search for picks to refresh your materials, loot, and health. Finally, my friends, the last thing we need to understand is layering. Everybody say layering. Layering refers to the height level that you're at, all right? For example, ground level is a layer, mid ground is a layer, and high ground is a layer. Your layer essentially determines the amount of engagement you're gonna be running into. You know, the bottom layer by ground level is typically the most populated and has a basic rule. Frag out or get fragged. <laughs> the bottom few layers are the most populated area of in-game and is often full of players trying to get impact frags or who are out of materials and have no other choice. So you gotta be careful, okay? This is easily the most dangerous layer to be on. The other popular area is mid-ground. So the mid-ground is generally full of players tunneling who have good materials and health. Being on mid-ground, guys, usually signifies that you're gonna have enough materials to last a while, and you aren't really looking for any fights, just a safe rotation. Mid-ground can consist of anywhere from two to three layers, up to even like seven or eight layers, depending on the density of your lobby. Switching layers within the mid-ground is a good strategy if you're trying to avoid engagement and just wanna tunnel into zone safely. Finally, the best layer of all, my friends, you already know this, this is the high ground. The high ground players dominate the match. <laughs> Usually high ground consists of one player with good loot and a ton of materials. This is the guy that you don't wanna mess with. This player often rains down shots on the rest of the lobby to thin out the player count and get some elimination points. Fighting the high ground player, oh my goodness, is often extremely risky. So we recommend simply just staying out of their line of fire if you aren't on high ground. Your goal in any end game should be to become that high ground player. We all wanna be, that's, that's the goal. With tons of materials and ammo. Obviously, you know, many factors influence this, like your materials, your HP, zone RNG, the density of the lobby, you know, the other players trying to attain high ground and more. Storm Surge is another heavily overlooked factor in your rotations. Depending on the density of your lobby, you know, if you're in a high level lobby or have a ton of players just trying to get placement, it's likely that the Storm Surge will be a factor in your games. Storm Surge is activated based on the players alive in your game. You know, Storm Surge is based on your total damage dealt during the match. Players who have dealt enough damage are gonna be impacted by Storm Surge and receive constant damage until they're either they're dead or, you know, they go above their damage requirement. The best way to avoid storm surge damage is to either like get eliminations throughout the game or look for tags throughout the game on faraway players. Also, you have the option to look around in endgame on players rotating for like a quick few shots. Even if you aren't necessarily trying to eliminate them, if you either like get a lot of frags or get a few kills during your games, you shouldn't have any major issues with the storm surge. If you do get hit by a storm surge, start looking for any tags or kills that you can get to raise your total damage. You could even pull the risky play of just simply jumping on a player and like 50-50ing them. When you do this, you could get easily hit with like a lucky one pump. 
but your momentum and element of surprise will typically overwhelm your opponent and get you a free kill. While this strategy may work for a lot of people, it's just best to avoid storm surge damage as a whole by hitting chip shots during your rotations, getting kills in early and mid game, and rotating early so you can look back for easy shots. In this low material meta, surviving as a solo or duo by simply just tunneling all over the place is harder than ever, unless you like manage to get a ton of impact frags along the way. That's why guys, it's just so important to look around and see if there are any previously used tunnels that nobody else is inside of, and using them to your advantage can be a huge help in preserving your materials. If you're in one of these tunnels, make sure to constantly, constantly keep an eye out for any players who might be camping inside or the original tunnel owners who might be planning an edit on you. And to cover your back, guys, at all times so nobody could just sneak up on you. This can easily be done by just simply looking down and just placing a ramp over your head once every few tiles. While this is a great way to preserve your materials, man, it's so important to take certain precautions so you can avoid it backfiring. All right, guys, so let's do a quick recap of everything that we just talked about. First up, rotating early is the best strategy in almost any situation. And it's gonna get you better position for later zones, the ability to shoot at enemy players for easy picks, and it's gonna help you guys avoid the giant cluster of players rotating next to the storm. Second, understanding the tendencies of your opponents is so important so that you can predict how others are gonna react to your rotations. Third, it's important to understand layering. It really is, and just know where to position yourself based on your situation and how you're looking to play out the rest of the game. Fourth, avoiding storm search is super important in stack lobbies, and it should be done in your rotation strategy if this is a concern. Finally, using your opponent's tunnels is a great way to preserve your materials. If you're able to play it smart and just watch out for edits, cover your back, and keep an eye out for any other players just camping in the builds, looking for unsuspecting players like yourself. Go into your next early game, guys, confident. Everybody say confidence. That's what it's all about. Knowing that you've got a good strategy and can come out of your fights with good loot, good materials, and a good path to the end game. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. Make sure to connect with me, guys, on my new Insta, your motivation guy, man. We believe in you guys, man. Keep going. Don't quit. Don't surrender. Keep getting better, not only in this game, but also in life, man. I'm posting up biz to inspire you to be just superstars, man, because that's what you are. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content like this, you know, help support us by using code ProGuides in the item shop. Also, do not miss out on visiting ProGuides.com. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought about this video and what you like to see next. We want to bring you guys like the best available content, so hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you later.